All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC and the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, on direct de la Ville de Québec, live from Quebec, it's showtime! Introducing to you first, the challenger fighting out of the blue corner on my left, La Spira Don La Coin Blue, wearing black trunks with silver trim, hailing from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States. He weighed in at 174 and one half pounds. This future Hall of Famer has a record of 51 wins, five losses, one draw and one no contest with 32 wins coming by way of knockout. Considered one of boxing's all-time greats. He is a veteran of 26 world title bouts. Here is the former undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Introducing Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins! And his opponent across the ring, the defending champion, fighting out of the red corner, Don LaCoy Rouge. Wearing orange trunks with black trim, he is boxing's pride of Laval, Quebec, Canada. He weighed in at 174 and three quarter pounds, with a record of 26 wins, one loss. He has 16 wins coming by way of knockout tonight. He is making the fourth defense of his title. Here is the popular and defending WBC and IBO light heavyweight champion of the world, Rouye Acouillère, le champion, Jean Pascal. Once again, a referee in charge, Michael Griffin, now to give instructions. Okay, Russ, let's go. Russ. Mike, let's go. Griffin's having a hard time getting them together. This out there. is unbelievable, guys. What's going on in that Pascal corner? Let's have a nice, clean fight. Remember to obey my command. Protect yourselves always, men. We're going to touch gloves now. We're boxing at the bell. God bless both of you. Touch gloves, fellas. Touch gloves, fellas. The last big fight of 2010. Capacity crowd of over 16,000 roaring for Jean Pascal. Does not want to disappoint these frenzied fans. 28 days shy of his 46th birthday. Can Bernard Hopkins turn back the clock and shock the boxing world again? Here we go. Round one scheduled for 12 for the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship. Hopkins, a counterpuncher by nature, has always looked to exploit opponents' mistakes. Nullify their best weapon, take them out of the game, wear them down. Pascal brimming with confidence off the win over Chad Dawson. An aggressive style, awkward, quirky, unorthodox, kind of herky jerky. Always looks to lead. He's not a counter puncher, but really fast hands, and he likes to let them go. He's strong, durable, has a great heart. This is a very, very big ring, almost 24 feet on the inside. We have to assume Pascal's folks who created this event like the idea of that, and we see Pascal using a lot of this ring. Oh, big right hand there by Hopkins that caught Pascal off balance. 
Hopkins knows versus a counter puncher like Pascal he's got to keep punching has to keep a high work rate use that jab a lot. Here's a body shot by Bernard and he also said go to the body often. Yeah that's always good especially with a guy it looks like uh, want to use his legs tonight in the big ring you know Hopkins 45 you might want to wear him down by using his, a lot of movement tonight. Hopkins promised us he'd use his jab in this fight. It's an underrated weapon, and so far he is throwing it here round one. Hopkins wants to back Pascal up. He knows what to do in his mind. The big question, can he physically do it all night long? He got nailed by a counter left hook, did Hopkins, and as we mentioned, Pascal not a counterpuncher. I nope. think this fight will have more action than we thought it was going to have because Pascal has to rush in with those bull rushes. Hopkins is being more aggressive and Hopkins is counterpunch. Yeah, he didn't have a high work rate against Roy Jones back in April. So far, he's showing one here. Early going. <laughs> Left hook to the body by Hopkins pushes Pascal back. Pascal in retreat. Now he comes forward with a nice right hand. That's his money punch. Yeah, he's landed that punch twice. It seems like he's found a way to get over the guards of Bernard Hopkins early. Hopkins has never been stopped, never really dominated. Down just once. First fight with Segundo Mercado in Ecuador in 94. Pascal never down. of the first round a right hand to the head and Stephen I, I was uh, really looking to see if Pascal would be over anxious and excited because of the crowd tonight but the young man seemed to be totally under control very focused which isn't easy at home where there are so many distractions and Pascal is as one part of the battle because he is making Hopkins come to him. Uh, and of course he's the champion so if you're the challenger you have to go get it but I don't think Hopkins is is comfortable in this mode. No and again if Hopkins is if Hopkins is going to have to rely on his reflexes I think it's going to be a long night you know what I mean because he is 45 and those counter punches are effective uh, that Pascal is using. Tonight. Yeah. Pascal is looking to unleash that big right hand again. He knows this is how you make a name for yourself by beating a marquee name like Hopkins. You talk about Hopkins coming into this hotbed. This is only amazingly only his third fight outside of the United States. That's almost hard to believe, but it's true. 
And he has really come into a lion's den here. Pascal, who grew up idolizing Roy Jones, ironically, that's the same philosophy, though, I mentioned earlier, as Bernard Hopkins, beat the big names to make a name for yourself. There's a school of thought that one of the things that motivates Pascal is avenging his idol's loss to Hopkins, winning tonight for Roy Jones. Yeah, but he told us, he said, I want to be the first John Pascal, not the second Roy Jones. And again, he allowed Hopkins to open up, and he's catching Hopkins with the counter punch. I don't know how Hopkins is going to solve that tonight. One way Hopkins could solve it is by getting that jab going, which he has he started with, but now he isn't. It's something that worked well against Felix Trinidad when he won. Missed with the right hand there, did Bernard. The crowd booing and eyeing. A lot of movement by Pascal, who is feeling very confident. Right hand off the top of that, another one by Hopkins. The first clinch. Something we saw a lot of in Hopkins' last fight. Oh, a leaping left by Pascal just before the bell. Right on the net. In attendance tonight, Luminaries, former Canadian heavyweight champ, the very popular George Shavalo, who took on Muhammad Ali twice in the 60s and 70s. There's the road warrior, Glenn Johnson, who fought Bernard Hopkins in 97 for the middleweight belt. Hopkins stopped Johnson in the 11th. Johnson was undefeated going in. Come on, champ. It's round three. We have one knockdown. Final seconds of round one. A right hand of the the head of Hopkins. Hopkins goes down for the first time since 94. Right now, Steve, it looks like Hopkins is using that jab as a pawing jab. He's just, you know, trying to set him up, but he needs to go ahead and try. And a running left hand there by Jean Pascal. You know, we talked about work rate. Right now, they've thrown almost the exact number of punches. Pascal's thrown 59, Hopkins 57. So in terms of work rate, they're very, very similar right now. Again, he's leading with one punch and countering with the other, and Hopkins hasn't been able to solve it yet. He almost missed with a big left hook then. Bernard going downstairs to the body. There's that overhand right that Hopkins wants to throw and land often in this fight. Pascal has a great chin. Very tough to get him down. We certainly saw that in the Carl Frotch and Adrian Diakonu fights. Great fights. Hopkins told us if you beat the crowd, you beat your opponent when he's fighting at home. But so far, he's not silenced the crowd. They have been emboldened by that early knockdown by Pascal. Over 16,000 on hand here. And a counter right and a good left hook to the head by Hopkins. It's a very close round. Hopkins getting a little more done than he did in those early rounds, in those first two rounds. Pascal knows he's in there with a clever, wily old veteran.
Francis is trying to buy time and get to the corner. The bell has sounded. Hopkins keeps punching. Michael Griffin didn't hear the bell. In fairness to the referee, it's a very quiet bell. And a very loud crowd. Bad combination for the ref. Second time Bernard Hopkins visited the canvas in this fight. A left hand and another hook, and it sends him down. Uh, he, Hopkins was saying it wasn't a knockdown, but there were two left hooks there that did it. No, it was a clear knockdown, and the reason why is because right here Hopkins relaxes and Pascal was still in position to throw the left hook. And at the end of the round, things got out of hand. Michael Griffin could not hear the ring. The rope, or the, the bell, excuse me, and Hopkins just kept punching. Well, Hopkins probably didn't hear it either because I didn't hear the bell ring. Yeah. I'm not even sure what he was hearing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was a ring or a rope. Hopkins is up first, ready for round four. So now he's been on the canvas twice. One in the first, one of the third. And that was a round in the third round that Hopkins probably was winning, and it might only be a 10-9 round because of that. But he still went down, and he lost the round. So Bernard Hopkins has some catching up to do, and those are fast hands. Yeah, they are. You know, Hopkins did not want to get himself buried in a hole because he's not a big puncher. He's not a knockout puncher. And if this, if this fight gets away from him, he may need a knockout late. Over the years, Hopkins evolved into a more technical fighter, but in the early er, years, he was known for a very good right hand. But he hasn't had a knockout since September 2004 against Oscar De La Hoya. That's nine fights ago. Good hook downstairs by Hopkins. Neither man has done much body work. See, the power punches in this fight, and that, that's been relatively even in terms of numbers thrown or landed, but clearly, Pascal's have had more impact. Another good body shot by, Hop, uh, by Hopkins, though. Yeah, Hopkins is doing some good work right now. I don't know if Pascal's trying to take this round off. I think they butted heads then. Hopkins really needs this round. Got to get some confidence going after being on the canvas two times. Even though he's disputed both knockdowns, they were legit. Pascal is a very difficult fighter to fight. He doesn't fight in the same rhythm as most fighters that you fight. Antonio's been talking about that all week, and it's made it hard for Hopkins. Yeah, you know, I've, I've said myself, those type of straight-up conventional boxers, Hopkins can chew them up and spit them out. But when you got a hurt, jerky fighter, you don't know what he's going to do. You can't time it. It's hard for Bernard. Hopkins coming on. Yep. He's landing. And the left hook has been the, the, the signature punch in this rally. And it's been a good rally for Hopkins. And I think one of the keys he unlocked here was that good body work against Pascal. That's been effective. Hopkins' best round. Right hand off the top of Hopkins' head by Pascal. Combination upstairs by Hopkins. Gets in and out quickly. Goes to the body with the left hook. Right hand on the top of the head. And it's being called a slip. It was to the back of the head. And Hopkins went down off the slip. And that was a great call by the referee. It was definitely an illegal punch. Keep it up. Breathe deeply. Breathe deeply. Keep it up, kid. When he comes near you, counter punch. Be aggressive there. All right, use your left hook and then use your right very effectively.
Well, against Roy Jones Jr., uh, he was hitting the back of the head, uh, Hopkins, a lot. And tonight it's happening again. That one definitely in the back of the head. The big difference, these punches, much more powerful. Yeah. Chris Gautier, our translator. Here we go into round five. Hopkins comes off probably his best round of the fight. If you're just tuning in, Bernard Hopkins down in the first and the third. The end of the first, the right hand to the top of the head, put him through the ropes. And a left hook in the third round put him down, but not hurt on both occasions. Hopkins missing with a left hook. I think uh, Hopkins got on the scoreboard for the first time in that last round. He's, you know, he said everybody over 40 that has some arthritis is going to be rooting for him. <laughs> I've got a touch of arthritis, but I'm paid to be objective, so I can't be rooting for him, you know? George Foreman used to say that stuff all the time. A good hook by Hopkins to the body. That was a beautiful punch. And that got the attention of Pascal. Bernard Hopkins in the black with the silver trim on the right of your screen. He won the middleweight belt here on Showtime in 1995. Defended at a division record 20 times. Incomparable 22-year career. And the press row you see all with Pascal. I have it the same as Herb Zerkowski does, 39-35. And also Albert LeDussier from uh, the uh, Journal de Quebec. And now here comes Pascal. And you just hear it by the crowd reaction. Well, Al, you mentioned pace and work rate. And I think this this uh, rate right here really favors Hopkins. Yes, I, I mean, agree. outside of those knockdowns, I mean, he's definitely in this fight. Yes. Past the midway point of round five, he makes Pascal miss, goes to the body, and then upstairs. Nice combination by Hopkins. And you see the number of punches, it, it points out what Antonio is saying, uh, even an edge in terms of number landed by Hopkins. Of course, those knockdowns kind of equalize that. But yes, it's being fought at a pace that makes sense for him. It's like some college basketball team that likes to use all of the clock. They like it when teams aren't running on them. Under a minute remaining, round five, scheduled for 12 for the WBC light heavyweight title. The fourth defense by Pascal, combination to the head, back comes Pascal. Pascal with a nice left hook to the jaw. Hopkins shakes it off, misses Wiley with a left hook attempt. Pascal sneaky fast. And Sean Pascal is a better defensive fighter than I think anyone imagines. And he certainly surprised Dawson with that. Maybe it's a little bit with Hopkins. And when he's hit, he has a granite chin. He was hit by some bombs by Carl Frotch and refused to go. That was a, a super middleweight. He's got Pascal in the corner, but Pascal wins that sequence. Settle it down. Hey, listen, we're not going to get into the big swinging mode with him. All right, we're not looking for one home run. He going big, we're going to put small shots underneath. We don't have to go big like that. That's why he fades. Because he go big and he gonna start missing and get tired. He, he weakening now already, son. I need you to stay behind that stick. And make them investments. I need you to make investments. You gotta be perfect on defense. Explosive legs. Explosive. Explosive legs all the time, all the time, John. Best defense you need. You got Mark Ramsey, the trainer for Pascal, has been with Jean since the age of 14. Round number six. I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, I gave Hopkins the last two rounds. I mean, Pascal can't let Hopkins lull him asleep. He has to find another gear if he wants to impress this crowd and win this fight tonight. Yeah, Hopkins is finding his way back into this fight. Now, those two knockdowns will certainly help in the scoring for Pascal, but... Hopkins is definitely coming back. And, you know, Nazim Richardson showing us why he's a, a, a great trainer. He wants to remind Hopkins, use that jab, land 
punches. Don't get into a free-swinging uh, contest with this fighter. Well, in Hopkins' prime, it was all about the sweet science, the skills, the old-school technique, the ring generalship, the timing, the well-placed punches with purpose, laying traps. Trying to do that here. You know, Hopkins has lost, in his losses to Jermaine Taylor, um, in that, in that, those two fights, he did not have a big work rate. They all big right by Hopkins. And he didn't have a big work rate against Calzaghe either. In this fight, it's about equal. He's not getting outworked in terms of lots of punches being thrown by Pascal. Lost by split decision to Calzaghe. One of his five losses. We approach midway, round six. Hopkins down in round one and round three. Pascal, you mentioned the war with Carl Frotch. That was just a shootout, and Carl Frotch ended up winning that fight. He said, I underestimated Carl Frotch, as so many people do. He said, I won't make that mistake tonight. Left hook to the chin by Bernard Hopkins. Frotch wants Pascal again at light heavyweight after the Super 6. Yeah, he's got that pesky Super 6 to deal with first. But, yeah, that's, they, they had a great, great fight together. Got, got to get by Glenn Johnson yeah. in the Super 6. You know, Hopkins again having a good round here in round six. He's landing really good punches, and Pascal's been very docile in terms of throwing punches. Pascal missing with the straight right hand. There's a nice quick combination to the head by Hopkins. A left counter by Pascal stopped Hopkins in his tracks. And, and, and Steve, I think that's the only solid punch that Pascal has landed this particular round. Coming in, I thought this fight would be based mostly on a mental strength of Pascal. This fight getting any tougher, he's going to start questioning himself. Here is Hopkins lunging forward. Hopkins firing to the body. Let go, let go. You got to keep your hand off the rope. Man. Final seconds of the sixth up. round. We got to push him along. This is the round, baby. This is the round we start to work. You understand me? Look at the channel. Give me both hands underneath to the body. Double back on me. It's there for you when you tip your hat, baby. You cover down. For the third straight round, Bernard Hopkins was able to do more and be more effective. He makes Pascal miss and then lands a couple of shots on the inside. And that was the round in which Hopkins was able to put his punches together. And there is the jab, which starts everything off for him. And when he's using it in this fight, he's much more effective and bullying Pascal against the ropes. Yeah, Hopkins trying to make it ugly right now. Pascal with a welt under the right eye. And we'll see if that uh, swells up and poses any problems down the road. Hopkins, despite being down twice in this fight, uh, very clean. He's coming forward with that right hand, Hopkins. Shoots the jab, and then fires a bullet. Left hook to the body. That was the body shot that stopped De La Hoya a couple years yes. ago. Yes. <laughs> Pascal backing up. Ever since the knockdowns, Hopkins has not looked bad. No, he hasn't. He's really gaining in confidence. He's feeling like he's uh, really in control of this fight and digging some monstrous body shots. I like what I see from Hopkins. It all started in round uh, four when he really started to go to the body a lot with that left hook. And he keeps pushing Pascal back. Now he deals to the body again. The left hook is finding a home for Bernard Hopkins. Straight right hand followed by a left hook to the body. By Hopkins, not a lot behind those punches, but active. When was the last time at this point in the fight Bernard Hopkins had thrown 20 more punches or so than his opponent? The answer to that is probably never. Hopkins uh, really doing a good job now setting up the right with the jab. Come on, let's go. 
certainly doesn't look like a fighter who's nearly 18 years older than his opponent. And not at all. And, you know, Pascal is not really making Bernard Hopkins work. No. I mean, early on he was, but right now Hopkins is comfortable. Hopkins continues to land, and he has become the busier of the two. And for the moment, Hopkins has taken the crowd out of things a bit. Oh, another one of those left hooks. He is going to the body with conviction. This is a terrific round for Hopkins. He watches as Pascal misses. Good right counter by Hopkins to the jaw. Ding, ding, ding. School is in. <laughs> he is schooling the younger Pascal. Right. No punches. Watch your head. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Seconds left of the seventh. Another one digging to the body. Left took over the top of the head by Hopkins. He's doing what he said he would do. He's pushing Pascal back and he's going to the body. And a left hook upstairs, but partially blocked by Pascal. Watch the back of his head. Box. As we head for the bell in round seven. A favorable round for Hopkins. Pascal missing with the long left. Jim Gray is with an interested spectator. Jim? Indeed I am, Steve. I'm here with Glenn Johnson. Of course, many years ago, he fought and lost to Bernard Hopkins. He's in the Super Six. He'll fight Carl Frotch next. How do you see this fight so far? Um, I've seen it being a close fight now. The two knockdown kind of take Bernard out of the fight, but the last two rounds, Bernard came on strong. So I expect Bernard to take over the fight from here on out because by watching Pascal um, in the past, I know that he get, he's starting to slow down right around the six round, seven round. So he's starting to slow down now, and I think Bernard going to take over the fight from here on out. That's an interesting comment based on the fact that he's 18 years older. Will that come into play, or do you still have that feeling? Well, I, I still have that feeling because Bernard never shows sign of, of, of wear and tear um, late rounds. He's always able to, to finish his fight. You know, you don't have a lot of knockouts. He's a guy who go the distance, so he's used to that. You're an older guy. Maybe you can pick something up when you fight Frotch. Oh, certainly. I'm always going to pick up things. That's why I love the boxing match. Glenn, good to see you. We look forward to that fight. Steve, back to you. Thanks, Jim. Another member of the 40-something club. Yeah, we got one sitting next to us, and they all fought each other. There's a lot of, a lot of synergy going around. Very incestuous. Right, yes. Right. Round eight, on. scheduled for 12. That's WBC light back. heavyweight title on the line. Hopkins down at the end of the first, down to the third, but he has been coming on since. I tell you what, guys, it looks as if Pascal now is just basically in awe with Hopkins. He's fading away, and he's disappear disappearing right before our eyes. Pestro, like both Antonio and I, think he is digging himself out of this hole, uh, Hopkins. Very small margin by two of the judges for Pascal, and we, in fact, have it close. I've got it 66-65 for Pascal. I have it 67-66, one point down Hopkins. The gap is tightening, the action's picking up, and Hopkins is clowning. Got hit with a big left hook and did that, I think, as a mechanism of playing some games with Pascal. Yeah, but it looks like Pascal has limited himself to the one counterpunch. He has to throw more right now. He's the champion. And Pascal keeping his distance and going in retreat most of the time. Hopkins gaining in confidence. Got his swagger back. Keep him up, Bernard. Keep him up. Bernard Hopkins knows how to win title fights. He's 21-3-1 with one no contest in title matches. It's an amazing record in terms of the number and the win percentage. Pascal 4-1 and one with one knockout in world title fights. Right. No punches. No punches, man. It I'm looks like Pascal is back to that uh, right hand left hook, and it had success early on. Let's see what happens. The right hand put Hopkins down of the first. The left hook put Hopkins down of the third. It's been a better round for Pascal, as Antonio pointed out. This might have gotten him back in here and got his rhythm going again. You know what, guys? I can 
can pretty much speak from Pascal's point of view. I've been in there with Hopkins, and you know what? I went in that fight underestimating him because of his age. I just thought I was a fresher fighter. This is what I mean, mental strength. He has to know. He's, he's questioning himself. How is this guy able to fight at this level at 45 years old? Pascal jumping in before Michael Griffin was through separating the two. You were coming off Rocky Balboa. You put on a lot of weight. He had come off the two losses, so it was a strange situation when you fought Jones, when you fought Hopkins. having his moments though it was a much closer round but there's the overhand right but again he was countered by the hook by Pascal and uh, of course that's vintage Bernard Hopkins playing some games with the young man who he thinks now he has in his control A look of deep concern on the face of Pascal. Hopkins always the first one up and ready to resume. Round nine. Nice right hand to the head by Bernard Hopkins. That one landed cleanly. Another quick combination upstairs by Hopkins. Hopkins showing hand speed. I think this round is very pivotal right now. We want to see can the champion reclaim the momentum. I mean, the last couple rounds, you know, Hopkins has looked good, landed some shots, went deep to the body. I mean, he's letting Hopkins take the play from him, Steve. He's definitely, yeah, he's he's the busier of the two here. Key element will be whether round four, or round three, excuse me, was scored a 10-8 or 10-9 round on behalf of Pascal. If it was a 10-8 round, then Hopkins had a bigger hole to try and get out of. Good shot by Hopkins there. Hopkins continues to connect. The right hand getting in. I mean, you look at this guy, he's in unbelievable condition. He's closer to 50 than he is 40. <laughs> and he's fighting a guy nearly 18 years younger. And this looks like the first round for Bernard. Yeah, you, you got to take your head off to the guy who's been a great, uh, dedicated, committed athlete for years. You know, he's never heard of him uh, doing anything negative in the game. You know, even though he had a couple, you know, bad glasses on him. But, hey, he's a stand-up guy and a great, great fighter. Oh, big, big right hand. hand by Bernard Hopkins. Chin. And that momentarily dazed Jean Pascal. He looks a little glazed. Yeah, that hurt him right there. I mean, it bucked him. He can't afford to take those shots from Hopkins. Comes back with a left hook over the top. The overhand right's becoming a huge weapon along with the hook by Hopkins. And remember, Hopkins was not pressed early in this fight. That's why he's fresh at 45. And he uh, didn't receive any body shots from Pascal. I mean, he hasn't been touched to the body all night. Remember, Pascal has never been down. He's got a great chin. He's very durable, great heart, grit and determination. It's going to take a lot to put him down. And dare I say, this is a better fight than maybe some people thought because Bernard Hopkins isn't always in great fights. But let me tell you, this has been fascinating and had its more than its share of exciting moments. Rising to the level of yeah. the champion. Pascal missing. Well, if this is Hopkins' last championship fight, fellas, he's going to go out on his shield. You got to give the credit to the champion a little credit there. He had a beautiful combination right there, and uh, hurt, hit Hopkins with some good clean shot. Final seconds of the ninth round. Come on, come on, and look, things are really look, heating up in Quebec, Quebec City. Step back. Come on, step back. is 
kid is bullshit, man. This kid is bullshit, man. He is trying to bluff you now, baby. You going to swing big? You going to swing big? is not known as a combination puncher, although in his fight with Kelly Pavlik, he did it a lot. But there, the jab and a straight right hand, and then he mixes in a left hook on the inside. Later in the round, the straight right by Hopkins, he tends to throw overhand rights. That was a straight one delivered very, very well. And from yet another angle, you can see that the jab is what set that up. When he uses the jab in his fight, Hopkins, very, very effective. Well, if Pascal trained for the Hopkins he saw in the Roy Jones fight, he looked at the wrong on, tape. Too much water here. Careful. Problem with the left glove, the tape on the left glove of Bernard Hopkins and Pascal is resting, taking advantage of every second. You know, Steve, in the fighters meeting, it was noted that Pascal uses a sports psychology, a psychologist. Well, he's going to need to be through these championship rounds. <laughs> well, speaking of that, Hopkins is 14-4-1 in 12-round fights, and Pascal is 5-1. So they're both good, but Pascal with less experience. And Pascal has had some issues with stamina later in fights. Yeah, he just walked into a beautiful uh, counter left hand, left hook by Hopkins. Nice body shot by Hopkins. And you know, Pascal landed a big uppercut when Hopkins came in. Uh, Pascal's not really hurting Bernard Hopkins right now with some of those shots, and that's key. Round 10, scheduled for 12. WBC light heavyweight title on the line. The man on the left, Jean Pascal, in his fourth defense. This is a very, very close fight. These right hand last few rounds are going to mean a lot. By Bernard Hopkins. It's important that the young champion back this man up. You know, he has to press Hopkins right now to let him know who's the champion. Right now, it's hard to tell. The crowd trying to urge on Pascal. Nice right hand by uh, Hopkins. Hopkins continues to score. Another right hand. This with the left hook. Yeah, Hopkins is doing some beautiful work right now. He's not loading up. He's delivering these combination punches, which is very effective. The gap continues to tighten. You see that two of the press row scorers, a one from the Journal de Quebec and Herb Zerkowski from the Montreal um, Gazette, both on, have, well, Zerkowski is Hopkins up, and so is Bernard Fernandez from the Philadelphia newspaper. And I still have Pascal ahead by 1.85-84 in this fight, but it's close. And I have the exact score you have, Al, 85-84 right now. It's close. The 45-year-old Hopkins looks the pressure of the two. Hopkins sticks his tongue out at Pascal after being hit. Under a minute to go in the 10th. That was blocked by Pascal, the right hand. I think Bernard Hopkins is going to look back in this fight and say, if I had only used my jab a little more earlier, I would have won many of those rounds. He just got caught with yeah. a big overhand counter punch. That's the type of stuff that pa Pascal was doing earlier. Let's see, can he continue? Hopkins dug an early hole. Can he survive those two knockdowns? Seems to have been digging himself out of the hole round by round. Hopkins says, you didn't, you didn't get me there. Hopkins on the attack. Pascal wards him off with the jab. And we're heading into the championship rounds. Same thing, same thing for the next round. Keep attacking. Work on him. He gives you two, I'm on three. He gives you three, I'm on four. That's how you're going to win rounds. Come on, champ. Bernard Hopkins 
Evans continuing to do great work to the body in the last round. Now, that was a tremendous uppercut by Pascal, but he threw it going backwards as he so often throws his power punches, and it did not hurt Hopkins. And obviously, it will not be easy to win a decision here in Quebec City, the champion's hometown. Is Hopkins thinking, I have to make some kind of a statement here in these championship rounds? We'll see. A, a knockdown will help him out <laughs> oh, <yeah>. tremendously. <laughs> Reminder that there's a judge from the United States, from Canada, and from Belgium. So they represent several countries. Right! No punches, man. I'm the <clears throat> this is an intriguing number. As Hopkins continues to come forward and blast away, still Bernard Hopkins has thrown more punches than Pascal. We talked about it that at the beginning. That was a key element, and Hopkins has risen to the occasion on that. Both men throwing good shots. Well, the WBC super a light heavyweight title come down to these final two championship rounds. Right there, you saw exchanges of both guys wanting to lay it all out for the victory. It was great action. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're not used to seeing Hopkins <laughs> in that type of action, but we love it tonight. Yeah. And give him credit. You know, here's a... He walks in here and has three terrible first rounds and completely turns it around. I mean, that's remarkable. Nice left hook to the jaw by Hopkins. Goes to the body. Oh, that body shot hurt Pascal. Hopkins ripping shots. I think you're right, Antonio. I think that had an impact on Pascal. If I know Hopkins like I know Hopkins, he's not trying to let this thing go to the scorecard. He may be looking for the knockout right now, Al. I agree with you, and I think he thinks those body punches are the way to go. And you do know Hopkins. <laughs> Coming up on a minute left in the 11th. Hopkins missing with the right. A left hook by Pascal on the inside. And did you ever think you'd say this? It's about numbers. Hopkins throwing many more punches in this round than Pascal. Yeah, it depends what the judges are looking at. left in the 11. There's the jab by Hopkins, followed up by a right counter left. Oh! But they tangled feet, not a knockdown. They tangled feet. That looked more like a uh, shoulder block. <laughs> Final seconds of the 11. Body shot there by Hopkins. Uppercut on the inside. Another one. Three uppercuts on the inside by Pascal, just at the bell. All right, keep it up. You got to work like you've never worked before in the last round. You understand me? You need to win this last round, buddy. Stay active in there. Use your jab. Keep him at a distance. Come on, buddy. You need this round. You understand me? You need this round to win. Mark Ramsey doesn't want to take any chances. This is where the slip occurred. There was a punch in there, but clearly that was just tangled feet, and he went down because of it. But the, the key here is, oh, and a little head action in there as well by Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> Team Richardson, 12th and final round in a terrific fight. And you know what, Steve? I think the difference in this fight has been body punches. I think he took something out of Pascal with those body shots. And Hopkins explodes out of the gate. He knows he's got to at least win this round. If not, knock Pascal down or out. Pascal's found a home for those uppercuts, but 
It's not stopping Hopkins. But look at the legend go. I mean, he knows that he don't want to take this to the scorecard. He's looking for a dominant round in the 12th. And this could really be a brawl these last couple of minutes. Pascal tying him up, trying not to allow Hopkins to throw. Hopkins continues to come forward, looking for something dramatic and spectacular here on the 12th. And your referee, Michael Griffin, has done an excellent job of officiating this fight and a fair job. Hopkins trying to be the oldest man to capture a major title. This is drama at its finest, guys. I love it. Under George Foreman is watching. Jab 
being effective. That awkward style of pursuing by Pascal. I'll tell you what, either way this fight go, I really feel that Hopkins may have won more rounds, but those two-point rounds that Pascal won early may be the difference yep. in this fight. It's going to be very difficult for Hopkins to overcome those two early knockdowns by Pascal. But he did win a series of rounds toward the end. I mean, I gave Hopkins mo most of the last eight rounds, so... finished strong <laughs> but he Bernard's started off talk, he's over here talking to us he's he, talking to Antonio he called, and you and I he, he calling me for a rematch yeah, <laughs> this fight in microcosm Hopkins protested then in round three it would happen again a left hand that sent Hopkins down that was the hole he dug for himself early in this fight to get it back again. But the mental, the mental strength that it took Hopkins to overcome that early deficit Tremendous. shows what type You're of champion this man really is. Yeah, it's a really valid point. We are set for the official announcement, fellas, so let's go up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Steve Morrow scores the bout. 114 to 112, Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> Judge at ringside, Claude Paquette scores the bout. 113 to 113, a draw. Judge Daniel Vanderveel sees the bout. 114 to 114, a draw. The decision is a majority draw. Pascal retains the light heavyweight title. Showtime Championship Boxing presents oh Bernard the Executioner Hopkins, a living legend. At 48 years old, he's the best light heavyweight in the world. Now the ageless warrior puts his title on the line against top contender Karl Marat. Plus, undefeated middleweight champion Peter Quillen battles Gabriel Rosado, and heavyweight sensation Deontay Wilder returns. It's a big night of action, Saturday, October 26th at 9, 8 central, only on Showtime.